Hi, my name is William Chia. I'm a product marketer at GitLab, and this is a customer persona video. A customer persona is a generalized way of understanding a person within an organization uh, that fills a particular role. Now, uh, everybody is different, and everybody has specific needs that depend on their situation. But a persona is a, is a type of general profile that looks at a, a type of role and asks what are common to most people that fill this role within most organizations. Uh, what do they care about? What are their wants and needs? Uh, what are the things they struggle with? So that when you talk to somebody in this role, you can tailor your language uh, to, that, to that specific person's uh, needs. So this video is for a DevOps director. Uh, so first, let's take a look at their, their kind of role and, and within the organization, what's their mindset? What are the attributes of a DevOps director, director of DevOps? Uh, so this is a role that is hands-on. Uh, they're, they're an owner and operator. Uh, they're a person who defines, architects, builds, integrates, uh, and they care about tools and processes. And they're leading the team that actually uses the tools. Uh, so this is a very hands-on role. They, uh, they're builders, they're doers, uh, and they lead groups of people that are actually using the tools, as opposed to a, a more strategic role uh, that may be more distance uh, from using something like GitLab. Uh, so this person in particular uh, owns and improves the delivery pipeline. So very specifically, the, the director of DevOps is going to care about their source code repository, their build solutions, continuous integration, continuous delivery. Uh, they're going to care about infrastructure, testing, uh, packaging and container, and their deployment tools. Uh, so that delivery, that software delivery pipeline, uh, is what the DevOps director cares about and manages. They, uh, they care about maintaining code base integrity. So they're going to care about things like uh, code quality and adhering uh, to security and compliance standards. So they want to make sure that the code that they're shipping into production is, uh, is of high quality, is going to uh, be running without bugs, and, and doesn't fail, and is going to run in production at a, at a, at a high quality. Uh, this is somebody who understands uh, automation and is generally seeking to drive more automation and how to integrate multiple tools together. Uh, this is uh, something they normally do. This is uh, the DevOps director tends to research, evaluate, and recommend tools, uh, but may not necessarily own the budget, uh, especially in larger enterprises. Uh, they're the ones who will do the evaluation uh, for their team, uh, but then will often do a, a recommendation up to, to uh, somebody else. They'll tend to report either into the engineering org or uh, sometimes into a specific operations group, depending on the company, uh, to make a purchasing decision. So what, is a, what does a DevOps director care about? Uh, so they want to implement better people, processes, and technology. Uh, so they're continually seeking to optimize and speed up the software development delivery process. Uh, they want to improve the quality of production releases. So they, they want to not only move faster, but they want to do so uh, with greater stability. Uh, and so the DevOps director is tasked with both of those things, which can be at odds with each other. Uh, they uh, are tasked with helping the enterprise move towards more automation. Uh, so DevOps in particular is about automating uh, processes, and this is a, uh, a main part of the director of DevOps role. Uh, they, as a result, uh, in order to automate things, in order to make things more stable, uh, and in order to make things move faster, they are going to want to formalize and standardize processes. Uh, so there might be smaller development teams within an organization that start a new process or start a new tool that are a testing bed to, to show that there can be some success somewhere. And a DevOps director is, can often be on the lookout for one team doing something well that then they want to they want to standardize out across the organization. Uh, they generally want to simplify things, so they don't like having uh, multiple tools. They don't like having a lot of complexity because that slows things down. That's very hard to manage. Uh, so simplicity and standardization uh, go together. Uh, the director of DevOps is usually not responsible for defining security standards. Uh, but they are responsible for implementing those security standards. So they do care a great deal about security gaps, and uh, they're tasked with, with implementing uh, security standards. Uh, 
Another point in the, in the same way that they're tasked with speeding things up while also maintaining great stability uh, that could be at odds with each other. Another challenge for the director of DevOps is they're often tasked with innovation. So in order to move things faster, uh, in order to do better, you have to change and you have to innovate. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, there's a lot of risk involved when you're doing new things. So the DevOps director is going to tend to want to use proven technologies. So uh, yes, they want to innovate. Yes, they want to move forward. Uh, but they tend to want to know that other organizations that have done this as well, uh, other organizations have seen success with this as well, and they want to use proven technologies. Uh, and for the most part, the director of DevOps is not defining strategic initiatives, but they're the ones that are tasked with implementing those strategic initiatives. So uh, certainly if you can find out within an organization, are they, uh, you know, depending on their level of maturity, are they uh, part, you know, doing digital transformation or digital maturity? Uh, are they just trying to adopt DevOps or are they trying to go cloud native? Uh, those kind of larger, broader strategic initiatives or even, you know, supporting new technologies uh, the DevOps director is not necessarily defining those, but they are tasked with implementing and supporting those. Uh, and so they do care about where the org is moving strategically. Uh, some of the challenges and the pain points. Uh, multiple teams using multiple different tools. Um, so a DevOps director has to be familiar with all of the tools, and this can create amazing time sink for them. Uh, just trying to get familiar with all of the different tools that different teams are using or that teams could be using. Uh, that can be a, a time sink and a frustrating process just keeping up with it all. In addition, multiple tools can mean multiple licensing costs and multiple vendors and they can be very costly. And uh, trying to train their staff and try to train themselves on using all of these different tools can also be a high cost. Uh, the director of DevOps uh, and many, uh, many engineering and development directors, uh, anybody who manages engineers is, is constantly trying to manage new hire bias and preferences. Uh, and so a big pain point is as new employees come in, they have a set of tools and technologies, uh, especially engineers, DevOps engineers and developers. Uh, they care a lot about the tools they use and they're very, um, they're very partial to the things that they use. Um, and so as new folks come in, uh, they can often look at the suite of tools that an organization is using and not be happy about them. Uh, they can often want to bring their own new tools in, or it can just be a blocker to hiring in general. If, uh, if a company is not using technology that uh, engineers want to use, then engineers are just going to go somewhere else where they can, they can work with tools that they enjoy and they can work with technologies they're excited about. Um, so this can be a blocker to the hiring pipeline, and it certainly creates friction uh, for new engineers that are coming in, uh, you can do a lot of work and a lot of relational work to get everybody standardized on a tool. And as soon as you're bringing in new engineers, they, uh, they're going to, you know, rage against whatever the, the, the existing set of things are and going to want their own things. Um, so that's a big pain point. That is a, a continual, uh, continual thing director of DevOps needs to manage. Uh, another pain point can be uh, legacy tools can have limited functionality. And so they can be trying to accomplish something and the tools they have, if it doesn't have that capability, um, that slows them down and that can be a huge pain point. Uh, similarly, um, poor integration of different tools. So this is especially managing different tools from different vendors or even from the same vendor that are not designed to work together. Uh, this can be a huge pain point. Uh, starting up new projects means you have to integrate all of those tools together. Uh, not just once, but continually having to do that. And those integrations between those different tools can be very brittle. Uh, so they can break easily and, you know, cause the need for continual maintenance. And so this is a, this is a cost to pay of, of constantly needing to maintain, uh, you know, poorly integrated tools. Uh, sometimes even needing to define that custom integration and then needing to own it and maintain it. That can be a pain point. Uh, Towards that end, uh, lack of automation or manual processes is also a pain point. So anything that needs to be done manually, um, you know, the director of DevOps is constantly looking at what are we doing manually? How can we automate that to make it faster and to make it more stable and more, uh, unif uh, more uniform, more consistent? Uh, they care about the stability of the production code. So what are the barriers or the blockers to a director of DevOps coming in and, and wanting to adopt new tools? Uh, well, first of all, like any role, is internal politics. Uh, 
you know, as you know, I already kind of mentioned, um, new developers coming in that you know have a preference for their you know tools. Um, existing folks, you know, just have a preference. Uh, the users want to use what they want to use, so there can be internal politicking. Um, management could be particular to a, a certain tool set or certain technology, or uh, it could just even be folks are just measured on different things and uh, they have different needs. And so, um, you know, the security team might have uh, different needs and desires from the development team or um, different needs and desires from the management team. And so all of those different parts of the organization can be at odds with each other. And there can be a lot of politics that need to be played, uh, especially the larger the, the enterprise is, uh, the more this comes into play. Uh, talent, as I already mentioned, um, not only using technology to attract talent, but if you have talent and they are familiar with a particular technology, uh, then there's a, there's a high degree of pressure to, to use that technology because you have, um, you have people and human resources that are already skilled and adept at that technology. Um, so having that right skill set and, uh, um, being able to, to make effective use of your tools rather than having to train and rather than having to learn and rather than having to come, come up to speed on the new tool set, uh, that can be a blocker to adopting new technologies. Um, simple unfamiliarity. So um, unfamiliar with DevOps as a whole. So in the broader scheme of, of all things, uh, DevOps can still be relatively new. So the, the director of DevOps, um, you know, often has a need to, to evangelize and justify their role within the org uh, and show progress. And so, um, you know, trying to get buy-in from multiple folks can be a blocker. And also, uh, this can diminish the, uh, the desire to, to have risk and wanting to go more with proven tools uh, so that they can, they can show the value. Um, a, huge, a huge blocker and a huge pain point for a director of DevOps can be meeting everyone's needs. So they're obviously tasked with, um, you know, owning the delivery pipeline, and um, this needs to this needs to be um, this needs to meet everybody's needs across the org. So different groups can have different preferences for tools, or even just different needs, um, depending on the language, the programming language they use, or the technology requirements they have. Uh, you know, if they have a if they have a tool that supports deployment for and and um, you know software code quality and testing of, of their particular set of technologies um, then they're very very apt to stick with that and they're not going to want to adopt a new tool unless it supports all those requirements um, and not just the requirements for their team but they're tasked with the requirements across the org uh, another blocker to adopting new tools could be the fact that today they're not may not be measuring uh, or they may have a very minimal set of, of measurements uh, and, and key performance indicators, KPIs, that, that, that they have a hold of. So uh, as they want to justify the role, as they want to show progress, um, you know, it may be hard to tell them, well, you have, a, you have a problem with something. You're not moving fast enough. Uh, they might feel that. They might feel they're not moving fast enough, but they don't have the measurement. Or they, don't have the, they haven't instrumented the, the measurement in place in order to show how fast it is and then in order to show progress. And um, that may be a prerequisite to adopting new technologies. Um, rather than just wanting to adopt the technologies, they want to know, can they show, can they show improvement? Uh, finally, uh, depending, on the, uh, depending on the industry, in particular healthcare in the US and abroad, financial services, um, you know, any place that's dealing with money, uh, you know, or just depending on the region, um, heavy compliance requirements, especially the larger the enterprise, the more likely they are to have their own internal compliance standards uh, that are not regulatory, but just that their security and compliance team uh, wants so that things are uniform and so that they mitigate risk. Um, and so in larger, the larger the organization, the more likely they are to have uh, heavy compliance requirements and that can limit your choices. Uh, and also even smaller organizations and heavy, heavily regulated industries can kind of suffer from that, from that blocker to adopting new technologies. Uh, so what does a purchasing journey generally look like for a director of DevOps? Well, the first thing they're going to want to do is understand the needs from their different stakeholders. Uh, you know, they're going to want to understand the, their developers' needs. They're going to want to understand management needs. They're going to have um, different organizations uh, or different groups from, from development to operations to QA that have different focuses to security. Um, and they're going to they're want to anticipate uh, 
you know, these different barriers. So maybe it's from the security team or the compliance team or from the IT team. Uh, they have to manage and just they just actually have to understand the needs first before they can even manage them. Then they're going to have uh, you know a research and evaluation phase um, where they're going to they're going to look for um, they're going to look for tools and of course uh, those that are that are popular or that are easy to understand are going to float to the top. Um, and so once they kind of uh, have done some research and evaluation, they're going to want to build a business case uh, for why we want to adopt this. And so this is going to be showing value propositions, uh, showing how much it's going to cost and what the return on investment will be, um, how adopting this tool or technology can support the enterprise, uh, the strategic initiatives uh, that are in place. Um, and uh, they're going to want to show uh, potentially some type of roadmap to sh say how long is it going to take to adopt this and how soon are we going to recoup these costs. Uh, those, those types of, uh, you know, build that case together. And then uh, they're going to want to get buy-in from all of their various constituents before making a recommendation up the stack to the, uh, to the person within the organization who has purchasing decision uh, and, and has the, the budget approval. Um, depending on the size of the organization, you know, it may, it may go up or down the stack. So uh, what are some things that you can tell, uh, you know, somebody who's in a director of DevOps role or a DevOps leader role within, within an organization, what can you tell them about GitLab? Uh, well, kind of think about these things that we've just discussed or things that I've just talked about uh, that are, you know, what is this person like? What do they care about? You know, what are they trying to accomplish? Play to that. Uh, what are their pain points? And tell them how you can alleviate those, right? So here's some recommended messaging. The first is that developers love GitLab. So one of the pain points of the director of DevOps is that they want to make sure they can drive adoption. They want to, you know, manage new users coming in and not liking what's there. Um, and by and large, developers, operators, folks that use GitLab love GitLab. It has a great user experience. Uh, and it actually eases the drive of adoption. So they're, they're going to care about standardization throughout the organization. Great user organization, great user experience. It's going to help drive that adoption. And they're going to care about pleasing their constituents, you know, pleasing all these kind of different organizations. Great user experience helps for that. And they're going to care about uh, you know, getting this out. Great user experience. Similarly, uh, be, they, they care about simplicity and standardization. Uh, and they want to they want to reduce the brittle complexities of of broken integrations that uh, that that cause extra time to maintain. So a single application, because GitLab is a single application for the complete DevOps lifecycle, this is going to simplify their tool chain, or it, it's gonna it's gonna uh, eliminate the tool chain if they adopt GitLab end to end. Uh, probably not eliminate tool chain altogether. They're going to use some other types of tools somewhere, but in terms of their DevOps lifecycle because GitLab can eliminate that DevOps tool chain, um, it, can, it can reduce or completely eliminate the, that integration complexity. And they have one tool that does, that does the job end to end. Uh, that's, that's a powerful value prop. Uh, on the other hand, that can be very, very scary. Uh, if they say, oh, I've just spent three years integrating all of these disparate tools together. Uh, I really don't, I don't want to rip and replace everything tomorrow. That sounds really painful. I don't want GitLab. Well, you don't need to adopt every part of GitLab all at once because GitLab has world-class integrations. There's no need to rip and replace. So a lot of organizations just start with source code management uh, and then they gradually adopt other parts. So for example, they might then move to the uh, continuous integration of GitLab. And so there, you can start with one part of GitLab and gradually adopt it. And as you adopt more of GitLab, you can see more benefits from it. Um, so that's a really powerful attribute that you, um, when you use it all together, it's very simple and powerful, uh, but you don't need to use it all together. It actually functions very, very nicely uh, in component parts. So that's very, uh, that flexibility uh, is, that shows value to this persona. So uh, another thing that they care about, again, is, is innovation and speed, but they also want stability. Uh, and so GitLab delivers both of those. First of all, GitLab delivers very, very fast pace of innovation. Uh, this is going to future-proof their technology, right? So not only when they adopt GitLab today are they getting very, very uh, cutting-edge technology, very, um, very, very uh, modern features, uh, but GitLab shifts uh, uh, every single month new features. So 
um, we're one of the top 30 uh, fastest, um, you know, fastest shipping open source organizations, uh, according to the CNCF. So um, we ship very, very fast. We move very, very fast. So we know how to empower other organizations to move very, very fast as well. And in this sense, GitLab can serve as a strategic partner um, with, with the businesses that we work with uh, to enable and future-proof their, their innovation. Because not only is GitLab going to have the features that they need today, but uh, GitLab is also continually innovating and going to have the features they need tomorrow when they need them without having to wait uh, because we move quickly. At the same time, uh, GitLab has amazing features for strict security governance. Uh, so this is shipping, this is agility with resiliency, right? This is shipping fast and shipping stable uh, together and having the best of both worlds. Um, so because you can deploy on-prem and have full, uh, you know, full control with uh, security side-on, SSO, one set of, um, one set of user permissions, instead of having to manage users across multiple sets of tool chains by having one application and only having to manage one set of user permissions, uh, that gives you a lot more control. And of course, GitLab's uh, automated security functionality uh, allows you to ship software that is um, more stable, more, more reliable, more secure, um, but also at, at speed uh, because it's automated. Uh, finally, GitLab is going to help support some of these strategic initiatives, uh, in particular uh, organizations that are looking to go cloud native, uh, and whatever point they are at that, that, that adoption, whether they're just adopting DevOps, or whether they're um, you know, just moving to microservices, or whether they, um, you know, they're a, a robust cloud native organization, GitLab is designed for Kubernetes, uh, and it is a, is a very, very powerful tool there, so it is going to help them uh, drive uh, drive those strategic initiatives by adopting GitLab as a technology. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is the director of DevOps.